Happy Friday, everybody. I am here today with Joe Cataldo, and he is LinkedIn North America lead for the Veteran Employee Resource Group. And so um, he has been at LinkedIn for several years in different roles. So Joe, want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Um, hi everyone. I, uh, as Laura said, I'm Joe Cataldo. Um, I am a relationship manager here at LinkedIn with our within our search and staffing department. Um, partnering with staffing firms all over the East Coast for their um, recruiting, selling, and marketing needs. Prior to this, I was a customer success manager within a um, staffing org, org, so that um, basically means I know everything about our products as well as anything a staffing firm needs to do. Um, I also am the North American lead for our Veterans Employee Resource Group, so I partner with all local leads across North America, making sure that we are impacting the veteran community internally here at LinkedIn, as well as locally, um, as much as possible. So, Joe, how did you get involved with, in, with having military affinity? Um, do you have a background or relatives? Yeah. Yeah, so I actually, um, both of my grandpas uh, were veterans. Um, I did not serve. I'm strictly a veteran supporter and a civilian ally. Um, I worked with two individuals at um, LinkedIn, one Philippe Buzide, who is currently at Facebook uh, as the veterans program manager, and then Paul Darnell, um, who ran it locally. Um, as they were departing the company, they kind of just handed it off to me, and, and I ran with it. Yeah, so if you're watching and you're at LinkedIn and you want to join and support, um, know that we have a lot of folks in our Veteran Employee Resources group um, who just have an affinity for our community. But today what Joe and I are going to talk about is some of the veteran nonprofits that we have worked with um, during our careers. And so um, for a lot of veterans out there, you'll go through a 40-hour transition when you leave the military. And when I talk to people, sometimes they tell me that it was anticlimactic, that it was a lot of time, they didn't feel like they got a lot out of it. And so they're not sure if they should continue um, with extra training that maybe some of the veteran nonprofits provide. Joe's done a lot of work in the space, and so what are your thoughts on that, Joe? Yeah, I, I think um, in today's society, it's, it's, it's always been about who you know, and today it's, it's, that's even more relevant, is about building your network within the organizations that you wanna work with. So um, if you think when you, you go to, you, somebody goes to university and they get involved with a uh, fraternity or a sorority, um, which is for fun purposes, but as well as building out a network, and that creates um, a lot of opportunities for those individuals based off of just even legacy and and further extending your network. For the military, um, that essentially can be considered a university as the universe or is the United States military. And these transition programs can essentially be a fraternity or sorority that will help you plug in to corporations and meet individuals that could potentially refer you into roles. Um, and uh, you know, just as it's important who you know, today we see hiring trends are, are more geared towards a referral basis. Um, companies heavily invest in the referrals from their current employees. So that opportunity to meet individuals at organizations um, is unmatched. So when we think about um, all the veteran nonprofits, and there's actually a lot, which is an amazing resource. Um, we here at LinkedIn, it's, you know, we partner with Breakline, we partner with Four Block. There has been experiences with Vets in Tech, um, and I'm just naming a few off the top of my head. But what would your advice be to a veteran when they're trying to choose which veteran service organization they'd like to work with? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a really great question, and it's it's a question that is going to be answered um, specifically to your needs. Um, you know, depending on on what industry you're looking to move into. So Vets and Tech is obviously gonna be really great for technology and moving into IT positions. Four Block is great for the full gamut of, of roles. Um, they really help you um, transition into whatever role that you're looking for, whether it be finance or accounting or tech, um, HR. Um, also looking at uh, PVA, the Paralyzed, Paralyzed Veterans Association. If you have specific needs, there are phenomenal um, transition programs that, that cater to those needs. and also partner with corporations based off of those needs. So, um, you know, I've worked a ton with 4Block. 4Block is a phenomenal, a phenomenal program. Um, Eric Stetson is, is the Northeast Regional Manager and working with him has just been such a treat. So I, I can't really say that, um, you know, there's one better than the other, but I, I can say really look at what your needs are and, um, and just get plugged in somehow. 
<clears throat> one of the things that we talked about that was actually really helpful for me to think about was um, an example that you gave when you, because Joe actually has presented countless times to a lot of the veteran service organizations on how to present yourself. So you had given an example um, about how to break down your military experience. Can you uh, add some illumination to what I'm talking about? Yeah, so um, it, I think today it it's, can be hard to um, really describe what you did as um, specific as possible, whether it be military experience, whether it be education, internships. Um, a little background, I also came from a staffing um, background. I was an IT recruiter down in Atlanta. Uh, so worked heavily with resumes um, and, and how to make them look as presentable as possible. I think the really important thing is discuss, really focus on what was the core mission and vision of your role. What was the impact you had and what was the impact that the, the team had but quantify what you did. Um, so for a specific example is I, I worked with an individual who essentially came to me and said, um, I protected a base and it was at all costs and that's what I did. How am I supposed to quantify that? And we just did a little exercise where we went through and we said, well, how many millions of dollars of assets were on that base? Okay, 80 million, great. So you were handling $80 million of, over, of inventory. How often were you running inventory checks to make sure that everything was in its place where it should be and accounted for? Four times a day? Um, great, so now we know that you were running inventory checks and you were creating spreadsheets and you were organized. Who were those reports going to after you ran the inventory checks? Was it the equivalent of a CFO? Now you're reporting directly into a CFO. Um, what was the team size? Okay, 12 of you that were, that were guarding this space. Now you're working on scheduling and you're working on working with others for a common mission. That's how we work backwards is think specific numbers, but really break down what the step-by-step -step was. It's okay to have the high level in there, but um, as you think about a 24-hour span, what was the core responsibilities that you had? Yeah, no, I, I like it, um, and I didn't think about it that way when I was even doing my own resume. So as we wrap up, Joe, is there anything else that you'd want to leave before we close out today? Um, I, I think the really important thing is is that um, it, it's 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 about going and getting the role that you want. Um, today, you can do that. There are tools to do that, like LinkedIn, of being able to reach out to the individual that is currently doing the job that you want and ask for advice. Um, build a network of individuals that were previously in the U.S. Navy or the U.S. Army that are at the corporations that you want to work at and reach out and ask to buy them a coffee and then actually buy them a coffee. But sit down and pick their brain. And uh, as you build out your network, it might not happen overnight. It might take a little bit of time and you might get eight no's, but those two yeses that you do get are going to be the most important for your future. So work hard at building that network. And when somebody sees your value, they're not going to pass up on that. So make sure that you understand your value and you understand your strengths. And then don't be afraid to go for the role that you want. Awesome. All right. Well, Joe, thank you. And we'll see you next Friday. Um, we have another guest. So bye-bye.